All right, Eric Gertler. Um, wow, okay. So Eric is the uh, CEO and executive chairman of US News and World Report. He's a native of Montreal, came yeah. here to go to college at Brown, and then went to uh, graduate school at the Sorbonne and another school in Paris and then came here to go to law school at American University where he was editor-in-chief of the Law Review. I was, yes. And then uh, has been involved in the city of New York. Um, development efforts, worked for Mayor Bloomberg and Mayor de Blasio, later worked for Governor of New York and, and ran the Empire State Development Corporation for Governor Cuomo. And now for a number of years, he's been uh, the CEO and executive chairman of U.S. News and World Report. So. Um, do people like from Brown call you and say that they should be more highly ranked because you went there? Does that, does that have any influence on you? Well, first of all, David, thank you for having me here. Thank you to the, uh, can you hear me okay? It seems good. Uh, thank you to the Economic Club um, and thank you to my team at U.S. News for helping to, to organize this. Um, yeah, no, I have, I have no cloud. It would make it much easier when people from Brown would, would call me. Brown was ranked 13 last year. Obviously, I'm biased. I think it's a great school. Um, but we have a very strict church and state policy, so no one on our business team knows what the rankings are before it goes into a, to, to embargo. So there's nothing I can do. Really? And, and I remind Brown of it very often. Okay, so um, maybe a, a little bit of, uh, you can't have a little bit of sneak peek of what's going to go on in there? We're, we're very careful about okay. you know, keeping that set. So next week you're coming out with your next best colleges, right? Yes. And you do this annually? We do it annually, best colleges every year. And um, do people ever criticize your rankings? <laughs> <laughs> um, have you been reading any newspapers this yes. last year? <laughs> what is that? The basic criticism, I guess, is that people don't like the fact they're not as highly ranked as they want to be, or they don't like your criteria? Well, our strategy was to fly below the radar. That clearly didn't work. But, um, but ju just to actually give some, some context, so I think it's important. Um, and I'm happy to talk about the criticisms, but let me just explain first why we do the rankings, because I think that, that that's important. And when it comes to the, to, to the college rankings, you, you know, we, we do the rankings because this is at a time when students are making the most important decision of, of, of their lives. Going to school, as you all know, is incredibly expensive. It is high anxiety in the household when you're going through the college process. Um, and as, as everyone knows, it has a huge impact even post-college. Post so what, what we do um, in our rankings is we enable students to be able to compare and contrast colleges using the same set of, set of data. Um, and that's been a process that we've used. We take the data that we use, um, you know, obviously we're, we're looking, analyzing the data. We, we take this whole process uh, very rigorously, very seriously, because we know that students are making the biggest decision of their life. And then the last thing I'll just say before we get, get into that is that, um, you know, in the media in the last year, it's pitted US news versus law schools or institutions. And we're focused on the students. We're a mission-driven company helping students or, you know, consumers in our other rankings, but we're, we're about helping students make the right decision of where they, where they go to school. So. Okay. So um, let me go back to the history of this. Yeah. And for people who may not be familiar with it, uh, for a long time there were uh, news magazines in the United States, yes. people remember. <laughs> there was, one of them was uh, Time, and then there was uh, Newsweek. Newsweek. And then the third one was U.S. News and World Report. Yeah. Uh, U.S. News and World Report was headquartered in Washington, D.C. Yeah. And um, a man named Mort Zuckerman, I think in the mid-'80s, bought it. and. Um, and he owned it, and for a while he was editor-in-chief as well as the publisher. And um, after the internet came along, it seemed as if people weren't buying news magazines in quite the way they were at the newsstands. So everybody either went digital or they stopped doing things. U.S. News did a different thing, as I understand it. You still were doing news, but you basically started this idea of rankings. When did the idea of rankings start for U.S. News? So so you're absolutely right about sort of the news weekly category when you know time newsweek uh us news and at the time uh the the audience of these magazines were based on sort of the pass along rate us news had a pass along rate of about 12 million 
Time had 40 million. And, you, you know, in, in a world where advertisers look for the top two news magazines to, to buy, it made it very difficult for U.S. News. So U.S. News started to think about how do we differentiate ourselves from the other news magazines. And in the back of the book, U.S. News explored how to do rankings, how to do more consumer journalism. It was called News You Can Use. Um, the rankings themselves for colleges started 40, 40 years ago. Um, but in, in the course of, of getting ready for this 90th anniversary, we looked through uh, past issues, and, and U.S. News has been doing rankings for 50, 60 years in, in, in different ways. The colleges started 40 years ago. Okay, so 40 years ago, who did it? It would take one person sitting down saying, well, I like Harvard, I like Yale, I like Princeton. <laughs> How many people did it? And where did they come up with the criteria, and where were they sitting? Were they in the United States doing this, or where were they? So 40 years ago, it was based solely on reputation. It was reputation surveys um, sent out and evaluated based on that. That was it. Okay, so you got more sophisticated, you could argue, and later you used more than reputation. What are the other criteria? Who comes up with these criteria? Um, so we have a team of you know, data scientists, journalists, um, that spend the year, I mean, at this point, years doing research, talking to academics, talking to industry leaders, talking to parents, talking to students, trying to figure out what is most important, what makes the most sense. Today, we evaluate colleges based on 19 criteria. Okay, so you started colleges 40 years ago. Then you went into other things. What else do you rank? So uh, we, we rank, obviously, best colleges, best graduate schools. We do, um, we do best hospitals. We do best cars, uh, we do best states, we do best countries, we do healthiest communities in, in almost every area. Do you best economic clubs, you do that? No. So, you know, <laughs> we, we, we're going to consider that, and we're also considering uh, best private equity firms. You I should, think, absolutely. So, I think that would be a big seller. So, um, that's and in fact, in fact, I think this is a good opportunity. In terms of doing the, d doing the research, we discovered that 50 years ago, we did um, uh, a rankings on, on who runs America. And I thought I would show you, because we thought that this year, we would launch um, a new rankings. Um, and you know we're basically relaunching what we used to do called Who Runs America, and I thought I would show it to you. Um, and so here's, here's the cover. Hope, hopefully you can see this. Who Runs America? <laughs> and on, on, on this launch, Oh. The rising influence of David Rubenstein, okay. West Wing being renamed the Rubenstein Wing after the latest gift, <laughs> and NBC, CBS, ABC all pick Rubenstein to moderate their presidential debates. Okay. Uh, Rubenstein raises a record $1 trillion for the new Carlisle Growth Equity Fund. Wow, now so. I, I can't ask any of my That's hard questions now. <laughs> Thank you. So now my hard questions, I have to get rid of my hard questions, okay. <laughs> So let me ask you on colleges. Um, other people seem to think that they can do it as well. Forbes, Wall Street Journal. Um, why are you better than the other guys? So, um, so, so, so this is a tough answer because I have to go, you know, completely contrary to the to the uh, my origins and beginnings as a Canadian, and 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 I can't be that humble. I mean, the the, the reality is, um, we are the leader. And, and we're the leader because we've been doing it for 40 years. We're, we're the leader because we have a rigorous process. Um, we, we take what we do very seriously. We have very strong separation of, of church and state. And, you know, in colleges, for example, we have 100 million users that go through our site. So what we say matters. Okay. And for that reason, you, you know, we get, you know, a lot of these articles are coming from our competitors. But the, the, the reality is, um, what we do matters, and, right. and that makes the difference. So if you rate hospitals and you go into a hospital yourself and it's not highly ranked, are they going to give you good treatment, or what are you, you ever worried, <laughs> you ever worried about that? I, 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 I pray, I pray. But, but look, there, there's a perfect example. I mean, you're going into uh, for a surgery um, that may be life and death. You're a caregiver, and you want to know what's best for uh, your parents, your spouse, whatever. Um, you want a trusted third party to be able to help you guide through that process. And that's the importance of what we do in Best Hospital. So you make money by selling magazines, but the, the only, there are only two magazines that you publish 
in a in this sense yes. is at the colleges and hospitals, right? The others are done digitally. Yes. Right. And so, how do you make money? You sell these, and you sell advertising. I guess you do. And then, if people want to use the the uh, ranking, they can pay you a fee. Is that how it works? So we 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 do do um, the best colleges guide. Um, obviously, we used to do the magazine. We don't do that anymore. This guide and best hospitals are the only guides that we do in print uh, today, and both of those are still profitable. Um, our our business model has really evolved over the last ten years, and you know we went from when we were in 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 print, um, we used to lose between ten and twenty million dollars a year, so it was significant losses. We became an all digital platform. Um, in 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 uh, thanks to you know Brian Kelly, who's here, has been on the board, and Bill Holliber did an amazing job. On, on helping to become all digital, but but the key is is that we have um, a diverse set of verticals, so education, health, um, you know, cars, products, and we also have diverse revenue streams. So we have advertising, we have uh, lead generation, uh, we have subscriptions, we do licensing, um, we have products that uh, are data products that we sell into institutions. Okay. Help them operate. So there's lots of ways that we. Right. Do you have any more news, though? You, you, U.S. news. And do you have any news? <laughs> we, do you have any news? <laughs> we we do news and we do World Report, but we don't do it the way. I mean, um, you know, most people think about the news that they get every day from the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal, and um, and and certainly that's that's important. What we're trying to do is provide you know, in a sense, analysis. How is the news that's, that's being written? How does it affect you? How does it affect your, your life? I almost look at it as that we're, we're sort of a second day news, news source. We're gonna give you the context and the explanation of how that, what that means to you. We're gonna give, give you, you know, if you can think about it, the bottom line of what does this mean to you? All right, All right so recently, the Dean of the Yale Law School uh, you may have heard about this. She said she didn't want to participate anymore, and then other law schools uh, jumped in and said they didn't want to participate. And then the medical school people, some of them uh, uh, were upset, and they didn't want to participate. So if people don't participate, are you going to give them a loader ranking, or how does it work if you don't participate? So, so again, you know, we're doing it from the perspective of, of the student. Um, you know, of course we want all schools to participate, but even if they don't participate, they're going to be they're going to be ranked. We still have access to to all the data, and so those made great headlines for some of these law schools. But it, but at the end of the day, um, we still delivered um, a robust set of rankings for law school students to figure out where they wanted to go to okay. law school. And uh, I'm sorry. So. So um, let me ask you about this. Some people say that when you get U.S. News rankings, they put an emphasis on the acceptance rate. And the, 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 theoretically, the, the lower the acceptance rate, the more the elite college. And so in recent years, a lot of colleges have been going out drumming up people to apply so that they're not likely to get in, but when they get rejected, it uh, makes those who get in have a very low acceptance rate. So what do you think about that criticism? That U.S. News is fo focusing too much on the acceptance rate, and trying to get low, and the yield trying to get that high, and people gain the system. Yeah. So, um, you know, I prefer to use the word that these schools are trying to improve their rankings. Okay. As opposed to the word that, that you used. And, uh, you know, but since. You, have you ever heard of the people saying that they, they, <laughs> they can game the system? <laughs> you know, I may have read about it in some of these other um, okay. uh, news outlets, but um, look, on, on, on colleges, you know, what, what we're doing is. Um, over the last 40 years, we've, we've evolved the rankings. And again, we started off as doing exclusively reputation surveys, and now we use 19 criteria. And what we're trying to focus on when our, when our team is spending time talking to all these, you know, the academics, industry experts, is what really matters to the student. And we come from, um, you know, a singular question. You know, is the college doing what it's supposed to do? Is it delivering that college degree? Is it delivering um, what the student is, is looking for? And so that is how we have now geared our, our rankings. So for example, and we take criticism about this, we put a lot of emphasis on graduation rates. Are you graduating that student, and not necessarily in four years, in six years? Uh, 
That has a high percentage in our rankings. I think that's a very fair question. Okay, but let me ask you, uh, a number of the law schools and medical schools have opted out, but I don't know if universities have opted out. Like Yale, has Yale opted out of the college? No. So why would the law school opt out or the medical school opt out, but not the college? If it's so bad, why wouldn't the college say we're, we're opting out? I, I ask myself the same question. I mean, okay. you they know, these, these institutions are not monolithic and it's, you know, it's clear, um, and you and I in the past have talked about being a university president is very difficult you know, job these days. And, and we've seen that at some of the institutions, um, you know, if we take Harvard, the MBA school uh, participated in the rankings, the colleges participated in the rankings, the law school and the medical school did not. Hey, so let's suppose somebody works for you at US News and World Report, and he or she is a very talented young person, they worked for a college, they worked uh, while they were in high school as an intern, and then they say to you, Mr. Gertler, I'd like to go to a college, would you recommend me? Would you send a letter recommending me to Harvard or Yale? Um, would you recommend somebody? I mean, and if you're sending the letter in, you now they're gonna be afraid that they're gonna upset you so that person will get in. Do you, do you ever have those people asking you for letters of recommendation? You know, I'm always happy to give someone, you know, and particularly, you know, a, a young student a letter of recommendation. I'm sorry to say though, I don't have a good track record though. So. Really? Okay. So clearly it's the opposite. All right, well, let me ask you an, another question. Um, people who are going to go to law school, Yale, Harvard, Chicago, Stanford, they're presumably reasonably intelligent people, and they have to make their decisions their entire life about is the facts this or the facts that. Why are the law schools so afraid that these applicants to law schools are gonna be fooled by your US News rankings? They're not gonna be able to discern whether something is really that legitimate. Why are they so afraid so, of that? So, so that's one of the, you know, almost funny criticisms that we get. Um, and we get criticized that our rankings do not um, provide and um, articulate the particular nuances of, of each school. And by the way, they're, they're absolutely right. That's not what the rankings are designed to do. The rankings are designed to help you compare and contrast with the same set, the same set of data. But to your point, do you really think that a student that's considering going to Yale and Harvard, Chicago, can't get a sense of what is the best place for them? I mean, these are kids that have done so well and they're talking to alumni, they're talking to, they're going up and visiting the campus, they're talking to students. Um, they absolutely have a good sense of where they hey, were. Now, you have a church and state separation, so you can't be involved in the rankings and know about it. But somebody's on the other side of the wall, can that person, um, you know, do anything that might not be appropriate? Can that person write letters of recommendation to people or... <laughs> I mean, who are these people that are making these rankings? Where are they living? Where, where, where are they? They live in Washington? Anybody here on the, working on these rankings? Where are they? I never so, met anybody who said they're working on the rankings. So, um, so, for example, I don't know if Stephanie's here and Bob Morris. There's Stephanie. Uh, you know, Bob Morris, who's been working on the rankings for, for 40 years. I mean, we have, a, you know, we have a team of 40 to 50 people dedicated just okay. on, on the rankings. I mean, at this point, Everybody in the company touches rankings right. in, in some right. way, but... All right, so like somebody, let's suppose, I, you've changed the rankings, uh, some of the criteria for this coming one that's coming out next week. So um, I did talk to the University of Chicago and asked them where they thought about the changes and, and they gave me some comments and so forth. But um, uh, who decides what the criteria are, how they're gonna change and, and you have to change the rankings every year so that people buy new magazines. In other words, if it, every year it's the same, Harvard, Yale, Princeton, every year, why would anybody buy a new magazine? That's the same every year. So don't you have to change them around a little bit? Well, you know, as, as I said, the, the, rankings, the rankings have evolved um, and, and we change the criteria every year, but we change the criteria to reflect what is most important to the, to the students. I mean. When you look at the rankings, I mean, Princeton has been number one for, for a number of years. What happens on Monday, I have to wait, wait for you to see. But, um, but a lot of the top colleges remain at the top because they do a great job. Okay, um, but suppose the, the man who's in charge of this, or the woman who's in charge of this, are they here? Well, what? Stephanie's here, Bob Morris, okay. I don't so think. What, where, I suppose they went to Princeton. Do they, every year, Princeton number one, is, is that a, <laughs> how do you keep those people from, don't they have to recuse themselves? if? Uh, they're number one, and, and, and they went to that school. How do they? De how do you deal with that? We we, we check. She didn't go to Princeton. I think really, that doesn't happen. That doesn't. <laughs> problem. That's not a problem. Okay. So today, um, uh, you are the leader in these rankings. 
Um, and you do it in the United States principally, I guess, right? Yes. But your U.S. News and World Report, why don't you do it outside the United States? Why don't you rank colleges in Europe or other places? Um, it's, it's a great idea. We did do, many years ago, we did rank colleges in the, in the Middle East. We've explored doing it in other places. Um, we've had conversations. Um, I will tell you that there's a lot of students overseas that use our ranking. So in India, we get 3 million users that are using our rankings to look at colleges in, in uh, So do people States. ever come up to you at cocktail parties and say, I'm applying to colleges, what do you think I should do? And you say, well, read U.S. News, or do you just give them? <laughs> I mean, do you ever have recommendations yourself? Um, I, I do get that, that quite often. Well, what do you say? Um, and, and I say, you, you know, you should look at, you go, th go through the rankings. But I, I will also tell you that we should not be the only source of information. At a, you know, at a, at a time when, at some of these top schools, you're paying almost $100,000 with tuition, expenses, um, it's such an important decision. You should be doing all the research, and you should be talking to other students. You should make sure that it's the right fit. I think every parent wants their child to go to, you know, if you did a sort of a Venn diagram with two circles, you want your child to be going to the best school intersecting with where they're going to be happiest. And I think that that becomes individual, and the kids have to figure that out. All right, so um, let's talk about, uh, why did you come here from Canada? You're an immigrant. Why, why, <laughs> why, why did you actually move here? You're, you... So, uh, as you said, I, I was born in, in, in Montreal, and uh, in, in Quebec, and for those of, the, those of you that have a sense of, of the history, Quebec um, had always been a, a place where there was a lot of tension uh, between the English and the French, going back to, you know, a war on the Plains of Abraham outside of Quebec City 200 plus years ago. But um, when in the 1970s, the Parti Québécois um, was elected um, to government on a platform of separating Quebec from the rest of Canada. And literally that night, my parents said to me, um, you're going to go to college in the States. And they really had a sense that the economy was going to decline and that things would be, um, would, would really sort of go south. In this case, literally, but, um, and... Um, Did you and, say, well, there's no rankings, I don't know which college well, to go to? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's exactly the case. I didn't, I didn't know. When it came to going to school, and I did very well in school, my mother wrote away for college applications, and the college applications came, and um, uh, I applied to Harvard and Yale, and my mother came to me and she said, um, how are you doing on the college process? I said, I'm done. And she goes, what have you done? I said, I applied to Harvard and Yale. She goes, don't you think you should apply to a few more schools? And I didn't know any other schools. So I picked up the next application, which happened to be Brown, and I filled it out. And then a number of months later, I went on a, uh, I went to Boston. I went to go look at Harvard, and then I went to go to Boston, to, down to Brown. And I remember going to Brown, and it was this beautiful day. Uh, and everybody was playing frisbee, and I fell in love with the school. And then I went to visit Harvard, and I, I didn't go to Harvard for two reasons. One, when I visited the campus, it was raining, and it didn't seem like that happy. And two, they didn't accept me, so. <laughs> but, um, and they've lived, the well, they didn't accept Warren Buffett either at the business school, but. Um, so where is Brown ranked here? Um, Br Brown. Is, is Brown ranked high enough? Brown is ranked 13. Yeah, and, okay. and I have lots of alums that remind me of that very often. So today, what is the future of U.S. News and World Report? Are you going to take the company public? Are you ever going to sell it? You're, um, you're going to do more rankings? What, what is the future? So, um, you know, I, I think there's, there's sort of several things to that question. I mean, first of all, for the last um, 10 years, uh, so I, I came back in 2015. I've been chairman and uh, CEO running the company. and. Uh, we've been focused on being a very mission-driven company, first and foremost, focusing on the consumer and helping the consumer make important life decisions. And we use that to guide us in, in, all, of our, uh, in all of our verticals. So we've had lots of vertical expansion. Um, and um, so different areas, we have a product area, we do best cars. It, it turns out that our brand uh, the trust that we've developed has allowed us to go into, in, into, other, uh, into other areas. But we've also gone deeper. We've also looked at how do we ensure that we have um, a very engaged experience for, for our users. So 
we're more than just the rankings. That gets all the headlines, but we provide lots of journalism around it. Uh, we provide lots of stories. I mean, everybody looks at the best colleges and said, who's number one? But we focus on what are the best public schools? What are the best, you know, best schools for, for, you know, for the money? We provide tools to help you figure it out. In the last six months, we've done four acquisitions. For example, we bought a company called College Advisor to help that whole process of helping our students be more engaged. So this is a personalized service where you can get advice on what is the best college. So that's what we've done. I think that's the future of US News and thinking about how do we provide a much more engaged experience. Now to your question, we get approached all the time about companies that want to, uh, want to acquire, uh, want to buy us. Um, to date, it's not been the right time. We're always open for conversations. Uh, my mother has always said, never say never. Um, but, you know, right now we've developed a healthy balance sheet and we're continuing to focus on how do we grow the business. Okay, so you're not for sale today, but you never say never. Never say never. Okay, so uh, today um, <laughs> you're coming out with a new book next week, the college one. How many would you sell typically of the, of the, the, the print copy? We sell 50,000, 100,000. How many do you actually sell? So on, on, on the book, I mean, what, what we really focus on, I mean, the book itself is, you know, is profitable. It also provides us great branding, um, you know, because they're in, you know, they're in bookstores, they're in train stations, you know, airports. But where we really want to push people is into the depth of everything that we provide online. And, and online, in our education, as I said, we get 100 million users annually through, through our site. And, and that's where we're, you know, we're exposing our readers to, to advertising. We've got products, you know, available for them. Um, that's where we're really making the money. Okay, so uh, you've been in government. Are you ever thinking of going back to government? I love my government experience, and I, I felt privileged to be able to uh, serve both New York City and, and New York State. If it's the right time, right opportunity, I would, uh, you know, absolutely be open to so it. So who worked harder, Mike Bloomberg or Bill de Blasio? <laughs> Um, Mike Bloomberg. Harder worker. Okay. So uh, today, um, if somebody wants to work at U.S. News and World Report and get a job there, um, what's the best way to do that? Are you hiring people, or you already have enough employees? So we've we've done a lot of hiring. We've doubled the staff um, over the last five years. Um, as we've had acquisitions, we've brought in more staff. We're always looking for talent. How do you deal with terror uh, with with spying? Suppose somebody really works for Harvard University, and they say, can you get a job at US News? And they spy on what the, the criteria are, and then they tell people at Harvard, you gotta improve this or that. Is that ever a problem? You know, we have not had that you problem. Had that problem? So okay. Not, not yet. So uh, when you tell people you're the CEO of US News World Report, what do they immediately say? It depends. It depends if I'm in uh, New York City or New Haven. So it really depends on the reaction that I get. Okay. <laughs> All right, so today, um, uh, you uh, have this business, and is U.S. News doing uh, in the news world? How many do you have reporters, or where, where, where do you get your news? When you have on your website, you have news uh, about what's going on. Do you have reporters still, or? Yeah, we do. Um, you know, we have reporters that cover Capitol Hill. We have uh, reporters that are writing um, original stories. Um, it is an area that we're now prioritizing um, and looking to, you know, to beef up. I think. In the last number of years, we've become uh, such a focused and, quite frankly, successful digital com company that we've moved away from, uh, you know, some of the sort of hard news, um, and we've been spending some time thinking about how do we um, right. do that news, and, and not just do it in print. How do we think about doing it? How do we think about doing podcasts? How do we think about providing information where um, where people are going to consume it? I mean, you know. 25% of young kids get all their information from TikTok. So those are the sort of trends that we've got to be. So let me ask about. you about hospitals. I'm on a hospital board, and uh, one time somebody um, came in and he was saved in an operation that was very difficult, but he was saved, and he became what is known as a grateful patient. A grateful patient is somebody that gives money to the hospital, thanking them. And he said, I'm going to give you, uh, I think it was $25 million, and I'm putting in my will another $150 million for this hospital. So I asked the height of the hospital, well, the person comes in again, are you really going to save his life? Because you know you're going to get... <laughs> so, 
So uh, I didn't get a clear answer, but uh, so like in your case, uh, you know, if you're picking, you're picking uh, hospitals, you can pick if you have a knee problem or a heart problem, you can go through here. Is that what you do? You pick it out who you're going where you're going to go based on your rankings. Is that how you do it? So uh, we have our honor roll hospitals, then we have rankings by state and also by by specialties. But you know, for for your friend, I, I think it's important to look at one of the most important uh, criteria is we look at outcome. And if he's worried that it's not going to be, he should focus well, but on what those, happens those sometimes. So you can you can play a game with that system. We don't want anybody that has complicated problems because he might die, and our death ratio would go high. You ever people play that system game? You know, again, I don't think I know that word. I think you know, how do they have a successful experience in the hospital? Um, you know, it's it's why we look at um, you know reams and reams of of data to make sure that we're getting getting it right. I mean, we're looking at. We're looking at outcome, we're looking at processes, we're looking at resources. Um, you know, again, if, if someone is going in for a life and death sur surgery, you wanna make sure that you're picking the right place and we wanna be able to help in making that decision. Okay, so what other areas are, are you thinking about of things you could measure in the future? Any more ranking possibilities other than private equity firms or something like that? Are there any other logical ones? Um, you know, we're, we're continuing to look at, at different areas. I mean, um, you know, the problem with every rankings we've done, it seems that other outlets uh, seem to want to, you know, imitate some of the, the rankings that we're doing. Uh, I think an area where um, we can, um, and that, that we're exploring is in the, in the business area. We just launched the rankings on best place for employees and we're thinking more about how do we do more in, in that area and for companies. You, you, you rank countries as well. We do rank countries. Yeah. And interestingly, Canada came out number two. Yes, once I mean, again. <laughs> I mean, really, uh, was there a little bias there or what? You know, again, I had no, uh, Canada was number one actually a few years ago, but um, you know, again, I, I, you know, it, I, we leave it to the editors. The United States was number, was number five in, in really? those countries, yeah. Okay, so uh, about four months ago, you got married. I did. And did your, your bride is here. Where is your bride? Where is she? There she is. So did you, when you were going out, did you use rankings to kind of <laughs> uh, say, uh, you know, rank her on this or that? Do you have all those rankings or you don't do that? No, you, you know, um, I think she was using rankings on me. And as I like to say, you know, thankfully she's perfect except for her taste in men. So I think, I think instead of having the rankings this way, she turned it around and was looking at it for the other way But I mean, does she... Did you ask her, well, do you read U.S. News and World Report, or, or do you like the rankings? Or suppose she said, I don't really like the rankings, what would you have done? You know, I, I'm not sure that that helped early on, but um, maybe, so. Okay, all right, so. But, but, you know, again, you know, all of our rankings now, we're very focused on, on outcomes, so the outcome worked out well. Okay. <laughs> okay, so what is the biggest surprise we're likely to see next week? I know you don't know, but what would you guess is the biggest surprise we're going to see when we, when we is it uh, so something new way of ranking people or ranking universities or what? Uh, so, so I think two, two things. One is there's uh, some new criteria that, that we're now evaluating. And every time we put in new criteria, there, there's universities that will say, well, that's not fair because I've expected it to be the way it was the year before. And then others that are really happy um, because the new criteria works, works for them. But, um, but if you think about it this way, that, um, you know, again, we're asking the question, are colleges doing what they say they're gonna do? And so some of the questions that are important, are you graduating kids from different various backgrounds? Are you graduating kids with manageable debt? And then are kids having a postgraduate successful outcome, meaning finding jobs? So, with that, we put more emphasis on Pell Grants and Pell Grant students, and also first-generation students um, who, um, you know, you often think that all oh, first-generation students know about all these universities, but they don't. And I think it's very important that okay. we have that information. All right, so normally we don't do this, but uh, who has a question about their college ranking? Anybody have a question here? <laughs> what? Yeah, Duke. Um, Duke is, uh, is, is ranked in the top 10 
Um, it should be higher, a little bit higher, but, uh, <laughs> but I'm waiting for the next one. So anybody have a question about your college ranking? Anybody have any question for our guest? Howard University. Um, how's Howard? Howard I think is actually number two or three in its in HB, uh, if I got it right, historically, historically black universities. Black colleges. I think it was number two or three. I think Spelman was number one and Howard maybe number two, something like that. Yeah, I don't have all the rankings memorized, but you don't. <laughs> okay. We only do eighteen hundred. How many so. people here have ever used this for their children or anything else? Anybody? How many are happy with the results? Okay, good. Okay, how many people really are not happy with the results? Okay. okay. But you know, it's, it's interesting. We did, a, we did a survey among college students, uh, and what we found was we had, um, I mean, it was really great results, somewhat self-serving, but 100% um, brand recognition, 70% of college students used our rankings to determine where to go to college, so pretty- And what about pretty this? Outrageous. There's a new thing come along, come artificial intelligence. Yeah. So, um, why wouldn't somebody just use artificial intelligence, chat GBT, and just go on and say, what are the best colleges? And you can get an artificial intelligence to tell you what you have in here. Why do you, why do you need this if yeah. artificial intelligence can do the same thing? So, so at, at, at some point, um, and I think we're still in, you know, I think we're still in early innings, our artificial intelligence will absolutely facilitate, y you know, that. But the, 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 the problem right now is you want a you trusted source, you want objective data. There's still a lot of biases involved in our, you know, artificial intelligence. I mean, one critique is that it's it's more um, based on on male outlets than outlooks than female outlooks. Um, and so, you want to make sure right now that you have it done in a way that's best for the for the student. At some point, we'll figure out how to use how to use AI. Um, but at the moment, you're not using artificial intelligence. You're using in, in very limited. We're using human human intelligence. intelligence. Yeah. Okay. All right, answer your question. Howard is number two in historically black colleges, is what it says. In 2022. Right, okay. So, um, all right, what did I, should I ask you that I didn't ask you? Um, well, I can tell you um, how I started at US News. Well, how did you start? So. <laughs> you were hired by somebody I knew. Yes, so, um, but you don't, so in my senior year of college, I was, um, you know, so I graduated in the 80s, and at that point, everybody was looking to go to Wall Street, and I was, like every, I was interviewing at, you know, at, at the various banks, and second semester, you know, you're going through, senior year, you're going through all the interviews, and uh, Mort Zuckerman, who had bought uh, U.S. News a year or two earlier, uh, who's also my uncle, called me up and said, what are you doing after college? And I said, look, I'm flying to go to investment banks. And he said, that's not such a good idea. You should come work at US News. And I said, well, I don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> and we went back and forth and he finally said, if you could do anything you wanted to do, what would you do? And I had spent my junior year in France. So I said, how about making me a foreign correspondent in Paris? And he said, that's a great idea. You should call I'm going to put you in touch with Kathy Bushkin, Kathy Bushkin Calvin, who's, who's here tonight, and she'll take care of it. And so I called, um, I called Kathy, and I said, Kathy, Mort said, you know, talk to you about being a foreign correspondent in Paris. And she says to me, she says, well, that's not going to happen. <laughs> she goes, but, it, but if you want, you can, come, you can come and be an editorial assistant in Washington, and we pay $12,700 a year. So this was a very far cry away from, you know, being in, being in Wall Street. But it turned out to be the best experience of my life. I got to understand how media worked. I got to understand how Washington worked. I got to um, understand uh, and work with some of the best journalists at the time. Four months into my stay, uh, David Gergen had left from uh, the Reagan administration. He became managing editor, later editor. I got to be his research assistant, I got to do all the research on the editorials, I got to prepare him for the McLaughlin Group, I got to learn so much from him, and so it was just an amazing experience. I stayed one year and then I went to Paris, not as a correspondent for, uh, for US News, but to go and study. Um, but, you know, it was one of these unbelievable experiences that in, a, in an era when, you know, all graduates are now, you, you know, most graduates want to go home and work remote, I think they're missing so much in terms of the experience and learning from other people. 
And I, and I really hope that we get people back into the offices. Uh, da uh, David Gergen is uh, right there, uh, one of the editors. Um, how many employees do you have now? Uh, we have about 460 employees. And how many of them are in the office? Not about enough. One or two? Not enough. So you don't require them to come in the office, I guess? We are, we are requiring um, them to come in the office, um, but we're, uh, you know, we're not getting the, um, so to speak, the attendance rates that, that we would like. Okay. And the person who's in charge of the rankings, <laughs> is that person here? Or? Well, in, uh, in, the, in charge of her data, her data. Uh, Stephanie's right okay. there. Okay. Yeah. And where did she go to college? Um, is that a state secret, or are we allowed to tell people? UCLA. UCLA. Well, how are they ranked here? <laughs> you seem to be ranked pretty highly here, actually. I, I think it's... Uh, okay, she has to be very careful not to rank UCLA so high, but I noticed it was ranked pretty highly, actually. Did you notice that? <laughs> well, and the best, best public universities, number one is UCLA. <laughs> That's what it says. Was that just an accident, or...? Okay. All right, look, Eric, uh, you know, it's a good business. I'd be happy to buy it myself at some point if you ever want to sell it, but uh, I don't My know. My mother said never say never. So. Yeah, so uh, I'll talk to your mother and see what uh, she says about it. But uh, anyway, Eric, thank you very much for thank coming you, along and telling me. Okay?